You are now listening to On Air with Lewis Hunter. Welcome back to On Air with Lewis Hunter, where we go into the lives of celebs, professionals, and behind the scenes workers of your favourite movies and film. Join me as we go into their lives and find out what it's like to be with one of them. So, today I am joined once again with Adam Williamson. How are you doing? I'm slowly but surely deteriorating from the inside. I can agree with you on that one there. Now, if you cannot tell by our voices this week, we are both dying of the cold right now. So we do apologise if we do sound a bit off or down. We are more than happy and more than excited to get back here again. We just are currently dying. So please excuse that. Now, this week, we have a lot of uh, topics to cover once again. As always, to do with films, gaming, sports, as we always do. So, to kick it off with the sports, the Super Bowl took place, I think it was just over a week ago now. Um, And this is where the Los Angeles Rams played the Cincinnati Bengals. Um, Now, Super Bowl is obviously a very, very, very big time of the year, very big game. Millions tune in all over the world to watch this game where the LA Rams beat the Bengals in Los Angeles. Now, uh, the Rams haven't won a big title like that in 22 years. So to win it in 2022, it's pretty good for them. Now, during this, they always have the adverts, which are always a big thing that people always watch. And they also have a halftime show, which has included the likes of Prince, Michael Jackson, Madonna, Coldplay, all the biggest names in the world. And this year, they had Snoop Dogg, Dr. Dre, 50 Cent, Eminem, Mary J. Blige, and Kendrick Lamar. And let me tell you, that is a show to break the history books. Now, the stadium itself erupted louder than even the game did and the ratings for the halftime show actually beat the game by like a big margin um obviously with snoop dogg and dr dre performing the likes of the next episode still dre california love you know all these big songs um 50 cent performing in the club um if i'm right on that one then mary j blige i'm not a big fan of mary j blige but she performs some of her biggest songs uh, and then obviously Eminem coming out of that box he was in with explosions. The crowd absolutely erupted. Sounds and scenes that you would only hear if like the likes of a team won the Champions League sort of thing and a last minute winner. Something that you don't really hear often. Performing hit one of his biggest songs, uh, Kendrick Lamar. A lot of people didn't really like his performance, but I thought it was quite good. You just sort of got to enjoy that sort of music to have a taste for that. Um, so it was a very, very, very good performance. I'm not sure, Adam, if you actually watched it yet or watched it live. Oh, I didn't watch it live, but I will get around to watching it eventually. It's definitely worth a watch. I've watched it probably about seven or eight times now. <laughs> it's just one of those things. I'm a big lover of the hip hop rap scene, um, and I think it was very, very good of them to finally acknowledge that within the Super Bowl because they don't get the recognition they deserve a lot of the time. So to have um, a nearly full coloured set of individuals, you know, putting out the um, performance and putting out a statement in itself says it all. So big congratulations to the LA Rams and big congratulations to the performers in the halftime show. Now, moving on to Netflix, we have the Cuphead show. Now, it is obviously based off the game that came out how many years ago now? Like four, maybe? Four or uh, five. Yeah, four or five. And it's a platformer game. But on this show, it's sort of set like an old 60s almost sort of animated TV show that you would see with like Mickey Mouse or like with, you know, Goofy, stuff like that. And uh, they have the big gloves, four fingers, you know, very cartoony animation. And it follows Cuphead and Mugman on their adventures and avoiding the devil who is the big protagonist i believe in the cuphead game um and how the devil's basically trying to take cuphead's soul now they didn't actually get to a finale on this season and that is because a season two will be releasing on the date i am not sure but i just know it will be coming in the future as it has been said on the show it will continue 
So I'm happy about that. You know, it's a very good show. It's only like 15, 18 minutes episodes. You know, they're short and sweet. Um, just the perfect amount of time you need for an episode like that. Any longer, I think it would be brought on too long. So it's a very, very good show and it's definitely worth a watch and I recommend it to anyone that hasn't. Why it's not in the Netflix top 10 of the UK, I don't know because it's a very good show. Now, this is a game that Adam and I have been playing quite frequently as well as Jamie and this is Monopoly Plus. Now Adam, if you want to explain to them the premise behind this. So, Monopoly is a game which, well, you've played out uh, yourselves. It's a game in which I tank in. I've never lost a game to lose. Uh, so that's lies. Says, otherwise, it's a lies. No, that's, it's, that's it's lies. lies. That, I, I can't take it. I cannot. I cannot. What about last night? What happened last night? I don't think I was there for that. You declared bankruptcy. <laughs> I don't remember this. Or the time you rage quit a couple nights ago. No. Yeah. Well, uh, if you haven't played Monopoly, essentially mm. it's, it's a very simple board game in which you land on different properties that exist around the board. The more you go around the board, the more expensive the properties get and the more the rent uh, is. So if somebody lands on your property, they have to pay you rent for landing on it. It's pretty cool. It's a pretty simple game. Um, genuinely had a good bit of fun for the last few days playing it. 100%. You know, it's a game where it's quite chill. You know, you sort of sit in your bed, be half asleep and play it, but then also get very frustrated with it and probably start wars with your friends. You know? Um, it's just sort of one of those games that it can make or break friendships if you take it the wrong way. Mm, <laughs> I, I'm not sure if I myself like, but you can speak for yourself on that one. <laughs> so, another game that you have been dying to cover, then oh. this is Life is Strange. So take it away. So, yeah, uh, I think I've talked previously about Life is Strange Colors, but... The remasters have finally released. I think it was maybe the last week or the week before. And uh, initially, when they first released, they were buggy to, to all high hell. So there was like T posing, constant like code showing up in the subtitles, um, like lighting errors. Like it looked absolutely disgusting. Not only to mention, there wasn't even a Series X uh, slash S slash PS5 version, it was all the, the Xbox One versions. Uh, with better lighting, that's it. So there was no 60 FPS mode, it was all 30 FPS with lighting that looked like it was born from 2004. Granted, they did fix it, and it does look great now, but and I've been playing a little bit of it, and I'm loving it, like, compared, comparing it to the first uh, time it released, when I think it was the 360, and then playing it now, it's it's like a whole different game in terms of the graphics. Yeah, it's, it's an interesting game with very story drive, um... And, I mean, I haven't played it, but I've only ever heard good reviews on it. So, I'll take your word on what you said there. Um, um, but, there's yeah. Also, there's also uh, another thing that uh, maybe coming out, it, it was rumours, and I've seen a couple of people cover this, is that I think there's talks with, was it Amazon, to, to make it into a show, which would be okay. amazing, because the format that it's in, it could definitely work as a show. Yeah. And... So yeah, speaking of shows, um, Amazon have announced that they will be bringing a Lord of the Rings spin-off show to Amazon Prime, and that will be called Lord of the Rings, po- Rings of Power series. It will be released on Friday the 2nd of September 2022. It's also the birthday of The Hobbit's Frodo and Bo- uh, Bilbo Baggins, aka Hobbit Day. Episode will be released weekly on Amazon Prime Video. It looks pretty good from what I've seen from the teaser trailers. Uh, I'm not a big fan of Lord of the Rings, but I know for people that are, that that is very very good on you know amazon and and the creators themselves to bring out a show to you know give more content to those that do enjoy that series and uh, the series of movies that there is uh as well as that another game that has been uh, censored and possibly delayed that is martha is dead now i don't know much about this but adam once again take it away and explain it out um, yeah, so on all platforms aside from PlayStation, the game has been fully released, fully packaged, everything that's in it. But PlayStation have decided to censor this game in terms of this one scene. Now, I don't know how much we can talk about it here, but it's a very graphic and grim scene. Um, more or less about, I think like Leatherface, that, that type of thing, um, where it's very grim and... It, he, car, he, car, he, carves, he carves people, essentially. Um, and it's okay. very... 
bit grim and disgusting and it's something that should be kept in the game censoring games is something that hasn't been done since manhunt and we've seen how how much criticism manhunt got for that given manhunt was a really messed up game like but uh i don't think that should have been removed from it honestly yeah i feel like the rating um that peggy gives should have sort of give a an example for people and as long as it says in the back and it does state you know it is graphic and it does include gore and all that their violence that i think it should have been fine you know yeah like i think they will get backlash on that yeah well honestly i'm gonna be playing it on xbox anyway because it, it seems like it could be I, I i love those horror games and um and apparently people really like more Thursday, you know, in terms of Steam and Xbox and stuff. I don't know about PlayStation reviews, but I can't wait to get onto it because it seems something that could be really good uh, in terms of, like, a layer on it. Like, the games like Outlast or Resident Evil, you know, I think it could be on in terms of horror with those. Mm-hmm. Now, Disney have recently announced as well with Marvel that the Marvel shows, that includes... The likes of Daredevil, season 1 to 3, Iron Fist, season 1 to 2, Jessica Jones, seasons 1 to 3, Luke Cage, seasons 1 to 2, and The Punisher, seasons 1 to 2, as well as The Defenders, which is a limited series, will be leaving Netflix on March 1st, but they will return on March 16th to Disney+, Plus, only in Canada for the time being. It's unclear what they plan to do within the US and overseas, Um but it's good news, you know, that at least they will be on Disney Plus, because they are shows that yes didn't get that much attention from people, you know, that are Marvel fans because they weren't canon at the time. Um, but I feel like on Disney Plus it'll bring more people to them. There's a hundred and sixty episodes at the end of the day that could come back to this, you know, with Vincent D'Onofrio's Kingpin appearing in Hawkeye and. Um, Charlie Cox's Daredevil appearing in Spider-Man No Way Home that sort of like leaves an empty space on what they do and where they lie within the Marvel Cinematic Universe now. Um, to be be fair, I'm going to start watching Daredevil because I've been telling some week or that it's just terrible just to wind (laughs) her up and now I want to watch it to get key events and just tell her like just tell her like it's not a bad show but I'm going to tell her just how each scene is terrible and just (laughs) <laughs> live just to wind her up <laughs> uh, that's awful <laughs> no I've been I've watched uh, I just finished it there the other day it's a very very good show don't uh, take Adam's criticism on a show he has not watched the light um, I would say on a scale out of 10 I would rate the show a solid 8 you know I feel like there's times where the slow is quite sh- or the show is quite slow pardon me but I think that it's quite a good show and it has a good story drive to it, you know, like between season one and season two and season two and season three, the storyline remains. So it is a show that is worth watching once it returns to Disney Plus or what before it goes to Disney Plus, you know, you have till March 1st, as they said. So you have just about a week or so, not even a few days. Like, you know, it's definitely worth starting at least. So- is, is there's three seasons of it, yeah, of the Daredevil. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Ooh, I I do want to watch it. She doesn't she doesn't listen to this, so she <laughs> she won't hear what I say this. But I'm, should I, be. That's, I, that's all I'm gonna do. I she should be. I'll promote it to her. But <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm definitely I have to watch it because I have to get key scenes just to annoy her about and tell her how awful it is. No matter how good it could be, it could be the mm-hmm. best scene, and I'm gonna just tell her it's awful and just mm-hmm. for no reason. <laughs> I mean, there's parts of the show where they reference the likes of the Punisher, like the Punisher is a big part of season two, mm-hmm. uh, and they reference Jessica Jones multiple times, uh, but they never mention for Iron Fist or the Cage, but they do mention Jessica Jones quite a few times in the show because obviously she's the do with like lawyers, I believe. So, you know, it's definitely worth watching. It's definitely worth watching. No. Now- Sorry, is that where that meme came from with the Punisher where um, he's sitting in court and he was like, and I'll do it again. Uh, like, he starts freaking out in court. That's from Daredevil, yeah. Yeah, okay, okay. I was just making sure because I, I, I can't wait to get that scene. <laughs> it, it's a good scene. It's, it's a good series and it's a good season with the Punisher being basically the main character that season. Um, but speaking of Marvel, the Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness trailer TV spot and full trailer released quite recently, I believe about a week ago now, 
and there's definitely a lot to talk about in it. So, basically, it's, it's been confirmed that Professor X is going to be in this episode, or in this show, sorry, as well as, you know, I believe Monica Rambeau um, and the Illuminati, you know. Wait, wait, pause. Monica Rambeau, where was she? She was in the TV spot, um, and she was also in the main trailer. Fighting Wait, where was she in the main trailer? I didn't see her in the main so trailer. in the Illuminati, whenever there's like a person flying down that looks like Captain Marvel. Oh, wait, you think, I I don't know. No, see, it is, minute. it is, she has blue fist. But, no, but, listen, that could be a list of characters, that could be, there, there's a there's a variant of Kang in the comics that is, when I say, whenever you pause it and look at the, the, the actual armour plate that he's wearing, especially on his forehead, it's exactly like Kang, and as well as that, it could possibly, now this is a very, very, very slim chance, it could possibly be Superior Iron Man, but that is a push and a half, that one. I mean, I, I watch a lot of tr- breakdowns on trailers and on episodes you know i watch new rock stars and they break it down very 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 detail that word um on everything that comes out like in big detail and from what it looks like it it, it seems to be monica rambo coming back we'll we'll have to see whenever it comes out but if it is it'll be pretty cool to have her in another sort of movie or show 100%. 100%. 100%. And, you know, they, they go back to um, the town of WandaVision, uh, where she finds herself. I don't know how that all ties in uh, on a oh, search yes. for the kids. So I feel it will all tie in, unless it's that other version of Vision. The, that could be fitting. What I don't like is she tries to compare herself to Doctor Strange. <laughs> now, whenever she says, um, what was it, uh, Whenever it was something about the universe and breaking it, and whenever he she does it, she's she's seen as a villain. That's mm-hmm. because she didn't just nearly destroy the universe; she mind controlled hundreds of people and made them feel the pain and suffering that she felt. While Doctor Strange was trying to help the kid, which the kid messed the spell. It wasn't Doctor Strange; it was the kid. Yeah. So I mean, granted, Doctor Strange did make a sort of mistake, but she can't compare herself to Strange when. One was for help, the other one was over grief and just pain. Yeah, I mean, well, there's probably a lot that has been cut out on that, and for the reason why that's been said, you know. Like, I feel like, obviously, with trailers and TV spots, you know, they have to sort of cut out a lot, like they did with No Way Home, with um, the reveal of Andrew Garfield, and with uh, Tobey Maguire, you know, they cut them out of that trailer altogether. So... I'd say well, they're sorry. probably messing up. I feel like they're probably missing a lot from it. You know, they haven't given you the explanation behind it. Yeah, I mean, was there not rumors or something out there that uh, Toby Maguire's meant to be in this one as well? Yeah, I highly doubt that though. Yeah, I, that that is a reach and a half. However, it, I mean, they've already got in contact with him about Spider Man. I mean, if they get him in for this one, it'll be pretty cool. I just hope that Andrew Garfield gets his own third movie. Though. Yeah, and I mean. The Doctor Strange movie is being directed by Sam Raimi, so God, anything can happen, you know. But yeah, I mean, it'll be pretty cool when it when it finishes off. I cannot wait to see this movie. Yeah, I know, a hundred percent. That comes out March twenty third, if I'm not wrong about that. They actually, so, I think they extended it out. Did they not in May? Oh, of course they did. Um, <laughs> but you know, it's only around the corner, and in the meantime, Moon Knight is coming up very soon. So we're looking forward to that. TV show on Disney Plus. Um, but speaking of Spider Man No Way Home, considering we have just spoken about it so much, even though it's a Doctor Strange movie, Spider Man No Way Home digital and physical copies are being released soon. Now, Adam, you wanted to discuss this, so once again, all yours. Yeah, so finally, I can get my hands on a copy of Spider Man No Way Home without having to travel to a cinema. Like, I didn't want to have to spend like eight quid every day going to the cinema, so I was waiting for it to come out. And after about three months, it's finally getting a release date, and you know I'm going down to pick that up as soon as it releases because I need to watch every single scene. Plus, I think there's content as well, such as cut content, bloopers, um, you know, a bit of like story in behind the scenes and stuff. It'll be pretty cool to sort of see that, you know, mm-hmm. see what it was like for them recording it, see maybe some of the, the behind the scenes when they were recording some of the footage. I think there was one of the scenes was when Peter 
Can, can we we can talk about the movie, right? It's been like yeah, two yeah, months. we can talk about yeah. it. So when Peter goes to reach for the 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 goblin grenade, he like misses his hand, but you can see like when they were actually creating it and filming it, he has like strings attached to his back and he's been dragged along, and it looks pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's definitely going to be those diehard fans that watch it like another twenty times to find every single Easter egg that is in it. You can't so... see me, but I put my hand up. <laughs> you are included <laughs> in that community um i mean i'll probably just be watching it again because it was that good of a movie and there are stuff you miss in the cinema so yeah so that comes out very soon um but the rest of the topics i believe are all yours adam so take it away yeah um <clears throat> so we have the the call of duty 20 or call of duty not having the 2023 released it which i'm pretty sure is the first call of duty to have that happen since about 2009 now People have been getting mixed uh, reactions to this on Twitter. Uh, there's been multiple people complaining about it, yet they were the same ones that have been cl- complaining about the quality of the games that have been released. So, I don't know. They're they're backtracking. But personally, I think it's a good thing because it allows for an extra year of development, especially with the way Vanguard released. It was terrible. <laughs> and I'm glad that um, they're giving it an extra year to cover because... It means then in terms of maybe zombies or even a campaign, an actual campaign is decent. I think, I think Vanguard had, had a campaign, but um, Cold Wars was way too short. It was good, but too short. Um, zombies needs improved as well, So especially where Vanguard, Vanguard's concerned, um, with there only being, I think, one map for like a good long while, and then Shino Numa released, but it was a terrible version of it. Um, but yeah, I hope a lot of people have mixed feelings because they feel like in terms of you know, like actual uh, content. They only have Vanguard right now, and I don't think anybody's really playing Vanguard at the moment. Um, but then when there's new Modern Warfare releases, which is allegedly called Modern Warfare Two, um, which I doubt because that's gonna cause a lot of confusion. Um, I hope it, I I just I do hope it is good when it comes out, especially with with I. I I don't know when the 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 Activision deal is going to be done, but hopefully by then they, they add the games to Game Pass because it'll be pretty good to have them on there. Yeah. Um. Um. And then next on the list would be about uh, Fall of New Vegas Two rumors. I cannot wait for this. Um. Genuinely, one of one of the favorite Fall games. Uh, it, it, in in order for me, it was Fall Three, Fall New Vegas, and. Now, I don't know what people feel like this, but Fallout 4 is actually kind of fun, especially in terms of um, <clears throat> and having mods for every sort of console that it was out on, so it was pretty fun just to play with it. And, you know, toy with things, such as, like, a Thomas the Tank Engine Gunner being, like, D- Darth Vader for, like, a, like, a couple hours. It was pretty good. Um, So, hopefully, whenever they release this new Fallout New Vegas, or if, you know, if it's not going to be for a few years, because I know they're releasing the new Elder Scrolls, um, I just, I hope it will be really good. Because um, Fallout seventy six, personally, didn't really hit the mark when it released. It's granted, it's become a bit better now, but back when it first released, it was terrible. Um, and then the Ryan Reynolds has then recently sort of teased that um there would be teasers coming soon for his new movie, which would be pretty cool, you know, Deadpool three, and. I hope in some way they do reference Marvel and that sort of universe or maybe bring him in in some way because honestly, there would be... There's so much story they could do, such as the Spider-Man and Deadpool storyline. There's just, you know, Deadpool and Marvel alone, you know, X-Force. Then you could bring the X-Men in. He could interact with a lot of the X-Men aside from that one scene in Deadpool 2, I think it was, where he traveled back in time, met Logan and all that sort of stuff. But it'll be pretty cool to get that in. Um, I think the, what he said was, um, what was it? Ah, yes, there. He said that he's hopeful to have a batch of updates sooner rather than later. So it means that he knows either it's been filmed or it's been talked about or it's been something's been happened that he knows about, and we're definitely gonna get more updates soon. Yeah, and it's such a big franchise and such a big genre that, you know, if they do bring it into the MCU, I really hope they don't get rid of the R written behind it, you know, where, like, they're able to, you know, cover more gory subjects on it and, you know, get rid of that humour because they're, they're such a big part of that and that's what makes Ryan Reynolds Deadpool, Deadpool you know. It yeah. has that Ryan Reynolds twist on it. I hope they don't remove that. I Honestly, 
if they do introduce him to the MCU, they will PC him a bit. I don't think they'll have that. They'll have the same humor, but just not as much curse words. It's the same thing they did with Negan in The Walking Dead. Um, like in the comics, he was he just he just dropped f bombs left, right, and center. Yet in the show, he was more he was more intimidating without them. Uh, Jamie's mentioned that as well. That you know when he walks around without the curse words, he seems more intimidating to the group, more serious instead of everyone's a joke to him. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I get sidetracked. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Deadpool three excited for it don't know where they're going to go with it but looking forward to it honestly Mm -hmm. um and then i think the final topic i had which was a pretty short one is a game that i've been sort of playing for a bit as well which was knockout city um which is pretty fun it's it's like it's like dodgeball on steroids Uh, it's pretty (laughs) cool like you can pick people up and throw them and turn them into bombs you can like uh, pick people up, through, uh, t- pick the other team up, sorry, and throw them off the side of buildings as well. Um, you can get different uh, balls to throw, like sniper balls, which is like a, a rugby ball or an American football. Um, you can get um, normal dodge balls. You can get like big dodge balls. It's it's pretty cool. It's it's pretty wacky, and you know, I actually think it's really fun. So the fact that it's coming free to play will be really good, and allow more people to get into it. So I'm really excited for that. Yeah, 100%. Now, before we go, I just want to let all the viewers um, be aware that we are now affiliates and partners with Apple. So, when purchasing anything through iTunes, through Apple Books, through Apple Podcasts, etc., make sure to use the code on air with Lewis Hunter, as that will help us uh, out. And, you know, whether that gives you, you know, certain perks, I'm not too sure. Um, but it's definitely worth using it. Uh, and we are also planning to release a premium side of the podcast to Apple Podcasts. Therefore, by subscribing, you'll get access to, you know, behind the scenes, extra, like, longer podcasts. So after, you know, for example, whenever this podcast ends, whenever it comes out, you know, there might be an extended version where we discuss more topics. So if you would like to hear more from the podcast, you can subscribe to that. Uh, that will be coming in the near future. We are finalizing getting that sorted, so make sure to follow the Instagram, and you'll find out updates on that one. Uh, as you are aware, we have the website on airwithlewishunter.com. If you want to find out more details on how to follow us online and find us, uh, everything's there. You can read out more about me and Adam and about the guests we've had on. So once again, that is on airwithlewishunter.com. So I believe that wraps up everything on this episode. So I just want to say once again, thank you for listening. Uh, We really do appreciate it. And we will see you next week.